grace and peace, beloved. At our last church council meeting, I was reminded again at how much our budget is a mission document uh, for those direct ministries that are in mission to all the ways in which our mission and those who do our mission are supported, um, including a beautiful building for our mission. What reminded me of this was as we were going through the uh, uh, financials, uh, this is a month for a one-time payment of $9,000 for the missionaries that we support. Um, and uh, that just reminded me that our, our budget, our documents express what we get done together that we couldn't do alone. That by being a part of this church, these are the things we make happen. And I wanted to say a little bit about where that $9,000 goes. You know the Busbys and uh, the, the wonderful ministry that uh, we support in Latin America. But maybe you don't know Wal Reed too well. I do know Wal Reed, Pastor Wal Reed, um, and Pastor Ar Arik Marween, who also we have been uh, supporting. They are from South Sudan. And telling their story gives us an idea of the network of mission that we're a part of and an important part of. Um, Marween and uh, Reet were uh, lost boys, South Sudanese lost boys, that generation of refugees that came during the terrible uh, civil war in, um, in Sudan. And um, they got to know Lutheranism in the refugee camps through Lutheran world relief. And then they came to this country and as refugees were resettled, they got to know Lutheran through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. In fact, there have been Sudanese lost boys on the board at LIRS. And then they got to know Lutheran even more because when they were resettled in various communities by Lutheran churches often, they would go looking when they moved for the nearest Lutheran church because the, what they knew about the L word Lutheran was generosity, hospitality, and effectiveness in, in, in helping, helping uh, new neighbors. So Walreet um, is a, a newer, from the newer tribe, and uh, Marik, uh, Arik Marween was from the Dinka tribe. Those are the true tribes having a civil war in South Sudan. There's now a tenuous peace, but it, it has been awful. It's been called one of the most um, uh, pressed, uh, dangerous places in the world, a, a, a hot point. And um, we have about 20 South Sudanese congregations, maybe it's even a few more, out of over 100 African national congregations in the ELCA. And um, I think Walreet comes from one of our Lutheran churches in Omaha, Nebraska. And I know that uh, Arik Mawin came from uh, a Lutheran church in Minnesota. And so we have, uh, you know, South Sudanese connected to local congregations like ours. So with planning of the local Lutheran South Sudanese community and with the Lutheran World Federation, we were able to begin the first Lutheran church in war-torn South Sudan. And the first missionaries there were Walreet and Arik Mawin. We did this with the aid of the Anglican church on the ground in South Sudan who walked with our Lutheran churches there are fledgling, fledgling Lutheran churches and, and, and uh, 
also with the Lutheran World Federation, so that this would be a recognized church like the ELCA, a church body, the first in South Sudan that is Lutheran. So you see the whole web of, of support, but it goes even deeper. Our, we were able to acquire some land in Juba for this new church building, which would also have a community center and uh, uh, an opportunity for all kinds of services that are, are necessary in uprooted communities of immigrants and refugees. We also decided that we would be present in the camps, in um, refugee camps in Ethiopia, next door. So, but we also decided that we wanted to be a peace church, that we would not start another congregation or another religious body that would that would continue the divisions and animosity and hatred and killing that's going on between the newer, especially, and the Dinka. The Dinka president, the newer was vice president, uh, both wanted power, set people against each other, and all of this war there also an expression of what happens uh, when uh, water is scarce, uh, grazing land, and uh, when people who graze and people who farm are set in opposition to each other in a climate-deprived area. So we have all this going on. So we gathered all of the leaders, pastors and lay leaders of the ELCA South Sudanese churches in Chicago. And I had the privilege of, of uh, facilitating this meeting along with uh, Joseph Boko, who's from Tanzania and is the head of the ELCA African Lutheran community. And together, we dealt with the issues and came out with a peace statement signed by all of the participants. And then we were able to go to Juba and to the refugee camps. So Mawin was in Juba. We also got land for a hospital and trained doctors there, working with the Ministry of Health of the government of South Sudan, who did the first fistula surgeries for females in that country ever. In the middle of a civil war, a hospital went up. I was pleased to preach at the liturgy where the ground was broken for the Lutheran Center in, in Juba, in the Jubilee neighborhood of Juba. And um, Maween was the pastor there. Walreet was a pastor in the refugee camps, leading worship as well as doing other ministries, uh, wraparound services, and, and, and helping be a li liaison for the hundreds of thousands of people stranded by this war. Hundreds are attending these worship services. So Pastor Wal Reet, a newer, Pastor Maween, a reek, a dinka, being sent by their congregations in Nebraska and Minnesota to be a part of a ministry that's a part of the Lutheran World Federation, to link with Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. We're getting a lot of legs out of our $9,000, people. Global Links is linking us to ways in which we make a difference. Let's remember that when we decide to respond to God's generosity with our own.